Well, it's April 20th, and I put these guys out. These hadn't hatched, these bee cocoons, and I thought, well, probably won't hatch, but I'll stick them out in the sun. And even though it's uh, quite late in the season, you can see all of a sudden we've got three or four of them hatching. One already hatched, the one at the bottom. And um, these, these guys are going great guns here, so it's kind of interesting. I wouldn't have thought so. Let's see what we've got here. Hmm, should have kept my glasses on. Can't tell whether they're male or female. Let's see if I can put them on and tell. As soon as those little antenna pop out, you can tell if it's a short antenna, then it's a female. And if it's a long, more droopy antenna, it's a male. Yeah, we've got those five hatching. I see the little cocoon on the right jumping around a little bit. So that one's obviously about to hatch too. <laughs> it's funny, little Mexican jumping bean. They're loving the sun. Oh, well, I think I see a little fuzzy white fuzz, maybe not. If so, oh, here's the one on the left going also. Let's see what we have here. There's a white fuzz on the face, and that's an Orchard Mason bee male. If not, it's a female. Lots of sounds around here today. <laughs> cool. Oh, I see it. That's a guy in the sort of middle top. Oh, both of them. Long antennae. Those are males. The far right bottom and the one at the sort of top middle. I can see longish antenna. So those are males. And that is a chainsaw. <laughs> Let's see here. I think that's a female, actually, now that I see. You can see her compound eye there at the sort of middle top right. Yeah, that's a female. If I could keep the camera on there, I'm trying to look and do this at the same time. Ah, there she goes. Not much hesitation there. Usually they do come out and let their wings dry off a bit. Maybe she's camera shy. And here comes the top there. Let's see what she's... It's a male or a female. nice female bottom right. Again, you can see that sort of sh short, there they are, straight up antenna. Oh, she's a beauty. Oh, how pretty. Wow, she's also going off. She's flying around me though. She, they always do their little navigation, flight navigation, so they know where they hatched and where to go back to. This guy is hatching. That is not an Orchard Mason. That she, I should say. Oops, she's flying too. Um, it was a horn-faced bee. You can see more brown and gold coloring. They are non-natives, but they're also excellent pollinators, which presents a little bit of a problem. 
least for me, in terms of, I, you know, wonder if I shouldn't allow them to nest or should destroy the, their uh, larvae, but it's a hard thing to do. But if the point is to increase native populations, then the horn-faced are taking away resources from our native mason bees, so I don't know. But I'll think about that tomorrow. All right, let's see who's coming out of this. Ooh, that's an orchard mason bee. That's another female. Ooh, yeah, get those antenna going. That's more typical. Then they fight with a, <laughs> the attack of the cocoon. Yeah, that's very typical. She gets herself all cleaned off, every leg, the wings, the those nice antennae, her abdomen. Ooh, fix that hair on your back. You're looking very hot, baby. Love it. Ooh, and here comes another female. I love the way they grab their antennas and yeah, it's funny. Nice, healthy. So there you go. It's uh, that's interesting because a lot of them have been out for over a month already. So to see that these females are still hatching and still very healthy, that's awesome. I don't know if you can see that little glob of mustardy yellow stuff there on the top right. That's sort of a has nutrients and similar to colostrum in when babies are born and they first nurse, it's a very nutritious thing, but basically they're just sort of cleaning out their, in, in their uh, intestines. Well, that little female, sometimes they don't make the hole quite as big as they should. They're in a big, oh, here's another horn face. Oh, there he was. See, she might, okay, come on, you can do it. Sometimes they don't make the hole big enough and they struggle. Sometimes they just can't get out at all and they're halfway out and they're stuck. Here's the attack of the cocoon. Oh no! Oh, oh. I can't get away from it! So ridiculous. <laughs> it happens frequently. Alright, that was quite the show. I don't see any other movement, but... Some might... Oh. I spoke too soon. I think I did see it, but anyway, you guys have probably had your fill. Some might think this is like watching paint dry, but I think it's pretty cool. <laughs>